this tutorial, I am going to show you how to make a sticker organizer. Hello, I am Tino from Victoria Designs and if you like using stickers in your journal or fussy cuttings or other small embellishments, I have a great craft project for you. This sticker organizer has seven envelopes with windows and you can make as many of these as you'd like. I will show you completely how to make it and all the printables that you need you can get for free if you opt in via the link in the description. The designs of this free project are based upon the designs of our Books and Butterflies kit. So if you like more printables of these designs, I link the kit below. I don't know how you feel, but I cannot wait to craft. So let's start. These are the pages you're gonna get. There are 13 in total, plus a back design for some of the printables. I printed these on 160 grams paper, that's about 60 pound cover. Each page has a page number and it says or it says not print on back of back design. It also says every time which part it is. And in this case, I printed the back design on the back. To save some ink, you can print the back design a little bit smaller if you like. But make sure that you don't print the back design too small. So this is the back base. This is the front base and then we have some panels. They don't have to be printed uh, on the back. And these will make everything more beautiful and also more sturdy. That's why I don't put the back and the panels on one design. That would have been easier for me, but no, this makes that more sturdy. And then some more panels and some more panels and also some fussy cuttings that you can also use to put into the envelopes. And another panel. And then we have seven different envelopes with windows. They are all different designs. But of course, if you think, hey, I only like that design, you can only print that design seven times. Now in all the envelopes, it says print on back of back design. I did that. Well, actually it's a little bit optional. If you don't mind the inside of your envelope being white, you can save on ink and not print the back design on the back. But you will see the inside through the window here and also when you open the envelope it will be white. But that is your choice. In a minute I'm going to cut everything out. First I'm going to show you what else you might need and that is, well, actually basics. So of course some glue to hold everything together. Now I usually work in tutorials with a glue stick because everything goes super fast and I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> You can also use a glue stick. There are heavy duty glue sticks as well. But if you really want to make sure that everything stays together for a very long time, you can also opt for tacky glue or um, article glue or any other better glue than a glue stick. I am going to use some double sided tape here and there as well. I'm also going to use this corner rounder punch for these designs. I'm going to use the 10 millimeter one just for this corner. But if you don't have it, you can just cut with your hand. I have some black ink here to ink the edges, also optional. I have here a circle punch, this is one inch, two and a half centimeters, also optional. It is to cut some paper to hide some rats. Uh, I have some double sided tape here, six millimeters, nine millimeters or a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch. I have my homemade brad setting tool here, it is just a piece of chipboard uh, with a slot here. And I will show you later how it works. And I also have uh, scissors, a craft knife to cut out the windows, and of course a metal ruler for the craft knife. I also have this thingy. It's just from the uh, electronic cutting machine silhouette, the spatula. I also have a bone folder, also optional. This, this is optional, you know. Uh, a lot of this is optional. What is not optional is I'm going to use these pieces of vellum to put into the windows of the envelope so you can actually see what's in there. What I'm actually using is not literally vellum but tracing paper for drawing. You see they come in full sheets and on these ones you can draw with pencil but you can also print on these. And viewers from Belgium and the Netherlands will definitely recognize this brand. So this is tracing paper, you can use vellum, it do you don't have to be able to print on it, it's just you have to be able to see through it. Okay, so if you don't have this see-through vellum-y paper, you can also use these instead. I have a lot of these um, paper protectors. I have a lot of these very old, very used um, paper protectors here, just waiting to be used in crafts instead of being thrown away. 
You can also use these um, pack packaging leftovers. The upside of the vellum is it's easier to work with than the uh, plastic. Um, oh yeah, something to punch a hole with. And then last but not least, yeah, I put it in here so these little thingies don't go anywhere. I have some tiny brads here, 14 to be precise. I have a little small magnet here, it's a neodymium magnet. I have a little washer here for the magnet to stick through. And I have cut from um, 300 grams paper, so very sturdy papers, these little rounds to make the envelope closures. Usually I use from thinner paper two or three and I stick them together to get a sturdy circle, but actually this very sturdy paper uh, works just as well. I have a bunch of those. I cut those with a 5 8 of an inch circle punch. And of course, if you want to close your envelopes in another way, you can definitely do that. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut everything out. I am not going to cut out the windows from the envelopes yet, but I'm going to cut out everything else. And for the corners, I'm just going to cut straight, straight, and I use my corner punch. And I have my guillotine trimmer to cut everything out, or at least the straight parts. But you can definitely cut everything just simply with scissors. Take your time cutting these out, just listen to your favorite podcast, that's what I'm going to do. And I will be back with all the pieces. Okay, I cut everything out and optional is that you can ink the edges a little bit. Now, they already have a faux inking, but if you still have a little bit of white on it from the cutting, you can add some. And for the base pieces, it might be interesting to add a little bit of a border here. Don't do it here, otherwise you're going to see it when we uh, stick this together. So on the base pieces only, the top and the bottom and the sides, but not the sides that will attach to each other. You can do that actually after uh, attaching them to each other, if you feel more certain about that. That's actually a great tip. Do it afterwards. Well, I know what I'm doing, so I'm going to keep on going here. But this is completely optional and also I'm choosing the color black because there is a little bit of black in here as well and also because I don't have a dark blue ink and you can definitely do it without inking. Okay let's start adding these three base pieces together but first we need to score these lines and I forgot something when I was talking about the materials and the tools that you need. And it is you need to have a scoring tool. Now, if you don't have a scoreboard like this, because it's very easy, you can also use an empty pen, an empty one, and a ruler and some sort of a mat underneath. You can use the end of this, for example. There are embossing pens as well. Uh, you can use all of these, but I just really like to use my scoring board because it's so fast. There. I don't think you can get this particular one anymore from Martha Stewart, but there are a ton of these out there. Oops. Like this. Okay, and score on the dark places here. This little strip of blue here is a sort of a bleed that will prevent you from seeing white when you fold this but I removed the rest of the color to yeah to save ink just as I did here because you won't see this white the panels will cover this that's it for now for the base and now I'm going to fold these lines for a crisp fold you can use a bone folder But that's also purely optional. Okay, and now I am going to add glue. You can also use tape. Well, actually, I'm going to use tape uh, to these tabs right next to that fold here. Not next to the blue, next to the fold. Not on the fold because your fold will get sticky. And then we will attach these on the sides 
very easy cover here. So I'm going to use my double-sided tape here, but you can definitely use your glue stick or other glue, as long as it sticks. There, make sure it sticks and then remove the backing. And then I'm gonna lay it down like this, sticky side is here. And now I'm going to line this up right next to that fold here. Make sure the top and the bottom are aligned as well when you're sure like this. If you're using regular glue, you have a little bit of wiggle room. Um, if you use double-sided tape, it sticks. So if you stick it wrong, too bad, you better start again. So keep that in mind. There. And then I'm going to do exactly the same here. Remove the backing. Line up the bottom and the top and right next to that fold there. And this is actually a very, very simple cover. And I'm going to fully finish this cover first with the magnet closure before I attach the uh, envelopes. I'm going to start by attaching some of the uh, panels. Here they are. This one goes on the back. I'm going to use my glue paper here to make sure I don't put any glue on my uh, table. This, yeah, I'm using glue stick as I mentioned before, but you can definitely use liquid glue. Um, but it could warp a little bit because of the uh, water content in the glue. But then when it's on there, just Put some books on it and let it dry for a while and it will dry completely flat. And of course you can use double-sided tape as well. That will be dry instantly. I'm also already going to put the uh, outside flap here. Just always put it right in the center here, there. And I'm also already going to attach this piece right here. You see, it always fits nicely in the center. I first wanted to put some part of the closure under here, but I think it will still work beautifully when I put it under the inside um, panels there. Okay, so this is the outside. This is what it's going to look like, this. When you just glued, it might still feel very flimsy, but when the glue is dry, this will feel a lot more sturdy. Plus we also have to put these on the inside. So under here is going to come my, I think I'm going to put my washer here and my magnet under here because it's going to be somewhere in the center. It's going to be hidden by the uh, envelope so it won't be as visible. But what I can already attach is this part here, the center part. There, make sure it's not upside down and it will fit nicely in between those um, folds there. Okay, and now I'm going to first see where I'm going to attach my magnet. And I'm going to measure the center here. Now it depends on how big your printer prints. Sometimes it prints a tiny little bit larger or a tiny little bit smaller. So check for yourself where the center is. So for me, yes, the center is right here. And I think I want to put it, yeah, about there. That's three quarters of an inch no, here from the edge. I'm going to put it right here. And now I'm going to find the distance from that mark to that fold. It's one and a half inch precisely for me. And I'm going to use the same distance here and like a tiny little bit, like a sixteenth of an inch further, like this. Yeah, happy with that. 
And normally when you've measured well, these two should be in the same spot when you close them. Now, if you want to make this easier, because I did it the hard way, I noticed too late, put it under here, glue your magnet here, give it some sort of ink and stamp where it closes and you know exactly where to put your other piece. But yeah, I took the hard way. So here are my washer and my magnet. I put them in separate compartments because otherwise it's not easy to get them apart. These are incredibly strong. Of course, you can use two magnets, one here and one there, but this works too and it's a lot cheaper, this washer. So I'm going to fix these with tacky glue because these need to be um, fixed strongly. This, let it dry. I'm going to attach this one right here. See. Like this and let dry. And when these are dry and they don't move anymore, you can attach the panels like this. There, and now that piece from the closure is hidden. Same here. There, it will bulk up a little bit where the um, where the magnet is, but that's okay because this is such a large piece, you won't, you will hardly see it, and that's why I chose to put it here and not there. These are very flat magnets, but they're still like one millimeter thick. And now let's check. Yes, it closes. Okay, so one up again. And of course, and of course, you can also use ribbons. You can put one ribbon under here and one. Uh, under here and then you can close the ribbon right here uh, or there are different ways of closing this with velcro you choose okay and now this cover is ready to add some envelopes into so i'm going to show you how to make those all seven of these of course you need to make the same way so i'm going to show you one First, I'm going to cut out that square. There, I'm gonna turn this around. I'm using a heavy duty craft knife. There are smaller ones as well. Just line up your ruler and cut out. Don't get rid of this yet, because I'm going to punch out circles here to hide the brads that will close it. So I'm going to keep this piece because it has the same background as the inside of the envelope, so you will hardly see them. If you choose to not have uh, something on the back, so if you have a white back here, you can just use these on top as well, because this will be white. Okay. And now I'm quickly going to just go over these edges here, so they're not white anymore. The thicker the paper, the more visible the sides of the paper will be, of course. There. And now I'm going to, put this aside for a bit, I'm going to apply some vellum. The sheets that I cut are about a quarter to three eighths of an inch larger on each side then it was here well my sheets were a4 so i could get four out of these see how many you can get out of your paper as many as possible of course so but here you see it's about a quarter of an inch six millimeter on that side and i think it's about a centimeter uh three eighths of an inch on the top and the bottom and that's that's great that's enough normally i would use six millimeter about quarter of an inch double-sided tape to attach these but when i was making the very first version of this this is a, this is already version three <laughs> um 
I use my glue stick because it's very, very fast. And later on, I tried to see if I could get them out to use in the, uh, in the second version to save on vellum. I couldn't get them out. They were really stuck. So I thought, okay, I don't need any fancy glue or um, tape for this. This will stick anyway. And I know I'm just going to add some glue on the sides. I know that I'm not going to go further than a quarter of an inch, especially on the sides. If you don't trust your eye, use double-sided tape or make markings. I just have some glue on each side and I can easily glue these in. See that you don't have any wrinkles, but with vellum, you usually don't have any. And see, perfectly see-through. Almost perfectly see-through. I know, I know, it's vellum. There. Okay, and now I'm going to score all these lines. These three, this one, this one, this one. Well, actually, you can do that before um, cutting out the squares, etc. That's what you want. It doesn't matter. It's just when you do it now, make sure you don't wrinkle the uh, vellum. These four and then these two tabs here. Like this. And now I'm going to fold these lines. Carefully again with the vellum already being in there. Okay, and now I'm folding that center line of these three. So we have here three folding lines. And this one, the center one, is the one that I'm folding in. And this one... I'm going to be folding out and on the back this one again will fold like this. So here we will have a tab that attaches this envelope to our cover. So it goes like this, see? And what I can already do is close this tab, see? We're going to glue this together. You can use regular glue. I'm going to use this tape here. I have to be careful because this tape is about the same width as uh, this tab. So make sure if that's happening for you as well, that it doesn't come out of the tab. Otherwise your stickers will be, um, will be stuck there. Well, if you want to prevent that, use actual glue. It will uh, dry. This will never dry or it will stick, but it won't dry. So, but I'm going to put this under the fold here and it's covering that fold there as well but since this has to be closed anyway that's no problem okay so now i'm going to close it just make sure no glue or no uh, tape will come out of that uh, tab there and now the next thing i'm going to do is attach the closure and I'm going to make circle closures. You can make your own type of closure if you like. And as I said, normally I will glue two or three of these from regular cardstock against each other. But I have here my um, 300 grams very sturdy cardstock. And I'm just going to use one layer of that. This is 5 eighths of an inch, but you can make them larger or smaller, whatever you have laying around. Um, and this is 16 millimeters, yeah. But first I'm going to mark where they will come. And I choose to get them in the center and about 3 eighths of an inch from the uh, bottom line. That's my choice. You can make different choices. Don't forget that. You don't have to do exactly the same as I do. You can go wild and I applaud that. Here. Yes, if your marks are a tiny bit off, that's okay. Or you use pencil, but it's going to be covered with the uh, um, with the circle anyway, so doesn't matter. 
And I'm actually, I'm going to use this ruler. I have a square corner here. And then I can, if I close it, immediately see where it needs to go. So here and then here. This is a very handy ruler. Okay, now I have my marks. And I'm going to punch these marks. You can also use a needle for this. It's only a small mark is enough. And I'm also going to punch the centers of these circles. Put some breaths in them. There. And then I'm going to use my piece of chipboard here. Stick this in through the hole that I just made. Open up these little legs here, like this. And now I have a very nice gap for my thread. I'm going to Add, just for safekeeping, a tiny bit of double-sided tape on top here. And I'm going to attach this one the same. Sticking this in the slot through the hole. And I can just lay this down and open these legs. Attach a little piece of double-sided tape. That's optional, actually. It's just to protect... Um, uh, the rest of the envelope and get this out and again I have a little bit of a gap here and now remember that I told you to keep this I'm going to cut out two of these and I'm simply going to remove these backings add some glue this and I'm going to put this on top and you will hardly see you will see a little bit which is a neat circle but you will hardly see these prongs this one as well so let's see there nice and now this closure is attached and I can actually close the envelope right now. And I'm going to do that with some double-sided tape here, just on these tabs right next to the fold again. This, oh, 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 don't do what I just did. See, you will see this. That was a mistake. Let's see if I can still get it off because it's tape. I was thinking, Tina, Tina, don't forget to put your tape here, not there. I'm just trying to get it off. I think it's working. Let's see how low do I need to go? Tiny bit more. Okay, I'm gonna do this like this. And on this side, I'm gonna put it here, not there. Yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a gamble but I think I think it won't stick anymore okay and now I can close it yeah you will see a tiny little bit yeah yeah I close and yeah you see it a tiny little bit where I was scratching away I scratched away a little bit of the paper but I'm gonna touch that up with a little bit of ink there it's okay there and now we have an envelope where we can put some thingies in like stickers they will not catch anywhere and they they are see-through like this the last thing that I want you to do is to fold this tab in both ways so it can move very well in your cover okay okay and I'm going to use this thread to close the envelopes so just some embroidery thread is great whatever you have Okay, I'm going to make a double knot around the um, top circle. 
this. I have it upside down so the thread will face towards the other end. Cut off the excess. And now, one, two, three. And that's usually it for me. There, and now I'm going to make all the other ones exactly the same way. What I'm going to do now is cut, 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 cut. Uh, vellum, 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 vellum. Measure, 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 measure. Push, 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 holes. You see, fold, 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 fold. I'm going to do everything like in a factory. You can do that with all seven as well, if you like. And if you don't, you can just make them one by one. So, I made all my envelopes just the same way. And I also added a strip of double-sided tape here. Again, you can use glue. I used a quarter of an inch, six millimeter tape, and I put it a little bit in the center. Normally I say, put the tape right next to the fold, but it couldn't hurt to go a little bit like a 16th of an inch extra under, you see, so that we can move very well. Now I put the tape on this side, but you can put it on the other side as well if you want. I put it so, because then I can first see what is going on in those envelopes, what stickers are in those envelopes before I attach them. But if you would like to see this side up, perfectly possible, just put the tape or the glue on the other side. Okay, and how to attach them? We're going to attach four here, three here, like this. And I'm just going to remove this um, back. And I'm just going to line up the corners of this envelope, actually the, the sides of this envelope with the panel underneath. Very easy. So like this, there, and glue in. I would uh, suggest a dry fit first if it really works, <laughs> to see if everything is right before you start gluing in, but I'm pretty sure already. But yeah, that's, that's actually great advice from me. First, make sure that everything's glued in right. And then just glue this one right next to the previous one and repeat with all the other uh, envelopes. Make sure everything is straight there. And then this one like this. You can also start here indeed because now I have this uh, little bit of panel left over, but. I don't really mind. And then the last three. I'm gonna line this up here again. You can definitely start here. Yeah, let's let's just start here, for example. First, yep. Then this one here. And then the last one right here, like this. Yeah, we're actually ready. Now you have a sticker organizer. You can also use them for embellishments and you see first what's in the envelope and then you can actually open the envelope and take out whatever you need. You can organize them this way. You can make as many as you like for all your stickers. You can add labels if you like, or here, or tabs. You can add tabs. Uh, for whatever you like. And when we close it, it closes automatically with a snap because it's a, a magnetic closure. Let me cut out this fussy cutting element that I added as a bonus to these uh, free principles. There you go. And you can just Pop this right in, like this. And you will, can exactly see which ones are in here. Okay, I hope you really like this tutorial and the free printables to make this sticker organizer. If you have a crafty friend that you think might like this tutorial as well, just send a video link to them. And furthermore, I wish you a very crafty day. Bye-bye.